So for today, we're going to talk about module three and module three is about non-digital and digital skills and tools. So I hope that you have already watched the two um, video lectures, I mean the, the previous video lectures for the two modules that we had. So dito, ang pag-uusapan natin ay more of the, yeah, the, the skills itself. What is the skills needed for the 21st century learners? What are the digital skills that they need to have? Dahil nga, as mentioned, um, technology moves so fast now. At hindi tayo pwedeng mapag-iwanan doon. Kasi nga, pag napag-iwanan tayo sa advancement ng technology, there's a great impact in also our, in our career, in our growth, um, hindi uunlad ang tao and most likely pati na rin ang ekonomiya ng isang bansa. And also some of the tools that we use in the, the digital world. This may be in some softwares or devices and the likes. So for our module 1, we will have 5 lessons. First is conventional materials. Next, select, selecting and using of ICT tools for teaching and learning. Then creating e-portfolio as a technology tool. Technology collaborative tools. Then digital literacy skills. So before we proceed, please watch this video first. The title of the video is three low cost and low Tech resources for the classroom by Patents Project. So it's about um, creating this this instructional material that you can use in your classroom. And baka may may makuha kayong idea or the idea that you'll get here, you can improve it to make it much better and effective. You can scan the QR code or you can search the title on YouTube. So once you're done watching, let's proceed with this. So lesson one, it's about conventional materials. When we say conventional material, so ito yung mga ginagamit natin in the past. Uh, uh, chalkboard, um, Manila paper, um, mga cartelina. So, those are some of the conventional materials. And we're, we will discuss about it and also learn if there are improvements or innovations with those materials. So, when we say instructional materials, these are Supplementary materials which help the teacher to make his or her presentation concrete, effective, interesting, meaningful, and inspiring. So, for instance, PowerPoint presentation or your... I, I remember when I was in, in college, pinapagawa kami ng mga instructional materials made of um, cartolina, ayan, manila paper... Um, those kinds of, of instructional materials because mas, mas mabilis at mas madaling mag-explain if there is an aid, there is um, a material wherein we can present it in front of the class. Kasi pag hindi napapagana yung sensory or yung senses ng mga students when you're discussing, sabi natin, the color of the, the sky is blue. Pero wala kang kahit anong instructional material. So, the color of the sky is blue. Paulit-ulit ka. Tandaan nyo yan, ha? The color of the sky is blue. Pero wala kang pinapakita kung ano ang color blue. Or, um, an apple, it's, it looks like, um, it's, it's red, it's somehow round. So, ang, ang hirap mag-explain at ang hirap mapagana yung, yung isip ng mga bata if they don't see, touch, 
or sense something. So, kaya mas, mas okay na may instructional materials whenever we are discussing so that we can uh, help them to experience the learning. Lalong lalo na sa, sa TLE, sa uh, major nyo. So, hindi pwedeng okay, magluluto tayo ngayon. Um, ang Maillard, sabi nating Maillard reaction, uh, nagba-brown yung meat kapag nagluluto ka. Pero wala kang pinapakita na, na demonstration kung ano nga ba talaga yung process nun. Or uh, microorganisms looks like uh, a worm with this and that. Ang dami mong pinagdadagdag. Pero, yun nga, wala kang presentation. So, ang hirap, ang hirap isipin kung ano ba talagang itsura nun. Baka mamaya nakita na niya pala yun in person, <clears throat> pero akala niya it's just, you know, something else. So, sayang yung learning if um, there's no instructional materials. But, take note of this. Look at the second uh, item here. So, instructional materials are those items that assist the information aspect of teaching, not teaching holistically. So, it means instructional materials just aid us, but not, not teaching holistically. Hindi pwedeng yung lahat ng aspect ng pagtuturo, eh, andun na nakapaloob sa instructional material na parang wala na tayo, pwede na tayong uh, mawala sa classroom kasi si instruction, instructional materials ay um, it's, it's a one whole big uh, teaching machine. So, again, this is just our um, assistance in delivering the information so that the, the learning experience will be much better. Kasi nga, we provide, or the instructional materials provide sensory experience. So, here are some of the instructional materials, some examples. We have lectures, talks, uh, writings, yan. For the digital media, meron na tayong videos, photos, presentations, open resources, yan, may blogs, may vlogs na din. Open source journals, public database, and so on. Then, testing resources, it's also an instructional material. Yung mga exams, test, it's, it's part of instructional material since it also aids us to, um, to check the learner's uh, knowledge and skills. So, part pa din siya ng instructional material. So, yan, standardized tests, classroom assignments, quizzes, and so on. So, factors to consider in delivering, developing, sorry, instructional materials. So, first is you should develop a storyboard and working outline based on the course and its requirements. So, it's much better kung mag pag-iisipan mo muna kung paano mo gagawin yung instructional material. Mag-outline uh, ka muna ng mga topics to discuss para um, hindi ka na malito dun sa kung anong ilalagay mo dun sa instructional material mo. Um, tip also, it's okay na hindi ganun karami yung nasa, for instance, kung gagamit ka ng PowerPoint or ng money paper, hindi ganun kadami yung naka, nakasulat. I actually prefer having a presentation na puro outline lang and some some short phrases or sentences. Kasi nakakahilo, di ba? Pag uh, isipin mo nung, siguro nung elementary kayo, naabutan nyo yung sobrang daming um, paragraph sa isang Manila paper. Tapos yung Manila paper na yon mga probably 10, nakapaskil sa sa uh, classroom hanggang sa dingding, na umaabot na hanggang door yung yung uh, Manila paper, mga writings. So, nakakalito rin naman pag sobrang dami. Uh, mas maganda na, yun nga, basta pag-ispan mo muna, ano ba talaga ang uh, outline ng topic na to. 
Then from that outline, you can think of creative ways on how you can present it in also an effective way, creative and effective way. So, pwedeng parang yung sa PowerPoint ko. So, short sentences lang. Then, may mga icons. So, pwede na yan. Then, ikaw ang magdi-discuss. Hindi yung lahat nandyan sa, sa presentation mo or sa instructional material mo na binabasa mo na lang. So, hindi ganon. Dapat, um, more of outline lang. mag assistant mo lang to, yung mga instructional material. Then, as a teacher, we do the discussion. We, we do the uh, active participation with the students. So, again, you should de develop a storyboard first and an outline based on the course. So, kung ang subject ay, let's say, um, cooking, Let's start with basics. Uh, food hygiene, sanitation, methods of cooking. So, list, uh, list everything down. Make an outline. Pwede yung outline lang. Lagyan mo na lang ng pictures, ng short phrases so that you'll be guided. Or definition, short definition lang. At yun yung magiging cue mo na, ah, okay, nakita ko na tong meaning na to. It means, ito yon. So, tsaka mo i-elaborate. Elaborate it not just with you discussing, but also with, <clears throat> excuse me, again, asking your class, your your students with or about the topic. So, from that, mapapalawak yung discussion. Hindi lang tayong mga teachers ang uh, pinanggagalingan ng learning. So, pati rin sila. <clears throat> Next is, identify existing institutional resources. So, baka sa school nyo, may mga resources dyan na pwede nyo gamitin. Baka may mga uh, tarpaulin na pwede gawing instructional material that is very helpful with the, with the subject. Pwede, um, there might be laboratories where you can conduct the, the uh, discussion or the practicals. So, identify if there are some resources or facilities like that para nga mas effective yung uh, pagde-deliver ng isang course or subject. And research of the shelf materials that have been developed by others. When we say off-the-shelf materials, um, unique or parang, uy, kakaiba to ah. Yung, yung mga ganong uh, pakulo nung, nung ibang probably teachers. So, may mga ginagawa silang mga materials na it's, it's very fun to use in class. Uh, for instance, I saw this PowerPoint presentation online. If you're familiar with macros, kasi may, ma may macros, macros usually ginagamit yan sa, sa Excel. But from when I searched that, when I found out that uh, PowerPoint presentation, pwede pala siya sa, uh, sa, yun nga, sa PowerPoint, yung macros. So, snakes and ladders, dun sa uh, PowerPoint presentation. So, pwede ka maglaro ng, ng snakes and ladders dun sa PowerPoint presentation na yun. And it's really fun and engaging. And I always use that in my class. Lalo na sa mga high school because they they like to play. So, pwede ka mag-roam lang, guys. Tapos, um, may mga scores doon na pwede mong i-input. So, it's it's very fun instructional material that I I use in my class. And it's it's very effective. Actually, games are, are effective. So, yun. You, you can incorporate those things. So, just just research or probably make your own. My, my classmate in college, gumawa siya ng instructional material made from cartolina. Um, nag, nagagalaw yung mga icons. Parang gumawa siya ng game from, from that simple cartolina na namumove yung mga yung mga icons and stuff. So, it's it's very engaging and also fun to to look at if the presentation are very interactive. 
Okay, next. So we have explore the possibility of adapting concepts of other teachers. So it's fine to uh, adapt with other concepts. But just take note, acknowledge also, cite the, the person involved in that um, instructional material, give the, the due credit to them. So, pwedeng i-adapt, you can ask co-teachers or your teachers themselves, your classmates, about how can we improve the instructional material. Okay, then, modify existing materials based on the course requirements. So, if there are existing materials, ano nga ba yun? Chalkboard, um, the usual PowerPoint presentations, Manila paper modify it make it into something um useful fun to 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 use to present kasi with with that there are times na kahit hindi interested yung students with the subject but with the instructional material somehow nagiging engaging sila try then tested pag ang instructional material mo I effective, engaging, it will um, make the students more participative. In in my class, yung snakes and ladder nga na PowerPoint, I tried using it in my um, sa, sa tansya ko, it's like 90% participating, 10% nag-participate pero hindi ganun ka-active. That's how engaging, uh, that's the, the, the good effect with instructional materials. Again, it assists us, not just in um, presenting the information, in making the learning experience much better, but also in uh, getting the, the interest, sparking interest from the students and making them engage in our class. And lastly, share it with other teachers or you can also sell it online. There are tons of instructional materials online. They are selling it. So, may mga uh, softwares, may mga apps silang ginawa. Tapos, pwede mong bilhin so that you can use it for your own class. So, ayan, pwede mong i-share or kung gusto mong kumita, pwede mo rin namang uh, ibenta some examples of instructional materials, the conventional ones. So, first is diorama. So, ayan ang itsura ng diorama. So, from our uh, module, dioramas are small scenes created of layers of materials all depicting a similar concept or theme. So, usually ginagamit sila um, about historical events like this one. So, parang, parang may shipwreck dito. It can also be used for, yan, for science uh, projects, usually in uh, showing layers of the earth or um, the ocean, yung mga layers then So, this is a good activity for those kind of topics. Pwede rin ito. Parang miniature, um, miniature model of a restaurant or of a classroom or of, of a place. So, this is a very effective, very fun way. Pero hindi lahat ng subject ay applicable ang diorama. Because again, ito ay uh, more of like a, a 3D or ang layering of materials nga. So, mahirap kung i-apply natin, for instance, sa, uh, um, ano nga ba, um, cooking, or, housekeeping subjects, or, siguro, sa, sa electricity, baka pwede pa, to, to show the, the, uh, a diorama of a house, yung mga electrical wirings, um, 
science, usually science talaga to, science and history ginagamit. But still, um, if you're creative enough, baka pwede natin gamitin to for a certain topic in related to our course or our uh, subject area. Next is we have writing board. So when we say writing board, ito na yung uh, chalkboard, whiteboard, and so on. So like this. This is the traditional. But the um, innovative one is what we call electronic board. Ayan. So it's a it's an electronic board. You can write there. You can select a file from your computer, let's say. Select a file from your computer and present it here. Tapos, you can write something on the board. So, kung makikita nyo yung bata, nag, nagsusat, doon na siya mismo nagsasolve ng, ng problem. So, it's possible. Yun na yung um, modern electronic board ngayon. So, hindi na yung chalkboard and whiteboard. Though, ginamit pa rin natin siya. But definitely, mas maganda sana if we have these. Um, I, I think you know why we don't have these. It's, of course, it's because of the, the budget and so on. Kaya, uh, the, the public schools doesn't have this. But I do hope na ma-experience natin siya one day. I just saw one, but I wasn't able to, <laughs> to use it. So, that's, uh, electronic board. Then, we also have this, para siyang writing pad. So, siguro mga ganito lang siya kalaki, parang notebook. Tapos, um, electronic. Pero, ito, uh, as, uh, ang alam ko, hindi na si save eh. So, it's just, um, an electronic, parang sketch pad. An electronic sketch pad. But, there are some, na, na pwede mong isave well on our phones. Di ba? We, we can write down something using a, a, a stylus pen. Um, yung mga note, mga tablet, I mean. So, pwede rin gawin, uh, pwede mag-function na parang ganito. Yung mga uh, Samsung, Samsung Note, I saw the ads, and also yung mga previous model nila. So, pwede ka mag, mag-sketch, mag-drawings, dun sa, sa device na yun. So, to show to you what is uh, our writing board, the electronic board that we have now, let's watch this short video.
Okay, so ang ganda ng board, no? <laughs> so, it can be used in in business, in a company, in an office. You can also use it in school. Well, for home, bakit ka naman pa gagamit ng ganito if we can buy the conventional TVs, yung mga LCD. Mukha siyang TV actually. But, again, this, uh, more of the, the functions of this this board, it's more of for presentation, for, for writing, for connecting into you, onto your uh, laptop para nga ma-present ma mga files and so on. So, that's the function of this electronic board or the interactive digital board from LG. This we have the flip chart. So, ang flip chart, ito yung uh, dati meron kami na ito sa, sa elementary eh. Mga uh, manila paper na pinagdikit yung, yung taas, yung this part, yan. Pinagdikit yung top part, then pwede mo siyang i-flip. Okay, it's, it's a flip chart. Then, dun sa Manila paper na yun, uh, maraming mga topics. Kunyari, um, multiplication table or um, letters and examples or something about science. So, more of list siya na pag if you flip it, marami kang makikita ng discussion. But, Yun nga, dahil my advancement of technology, we have an electronic flip chart. So, let's watch this video. So, kung mapapansin nyo, no, yung uh, parang flip board na to from, from Samsung, mukha rin siyang electronic board, but it's just that, yun nga, pwede mo siyang um, ibahin ng, ng itsura, pwedeng naka uh, horizontal or vertical, then it's very easy to use. You can tap your phone, mapapresent na kung ano yung gusto mong i-present on that. And you can also write some things there.
And if gusto mo nang i-change yung, yung presentation or probably yung page, you can somehow like electronically flip it or change it into another uh, presentation. So it's very easy. Sana may mga ganitong um, devices, technology sa classroom natin. And I, I think yung learning experience na nakukuha natin sa schools ay mas magiging maganda talaga because again, these technologies it assists us, it helps us. Ang, ang hirap kaya mag-explain ng, uh, ng isang bagay na through Manila Paper lang or through Cartolina na magdo-drawing ka pa or magpiprint tas didikit. Mas maganda yung for instance, uh, kahit PowerPoint presentation or projector na magpe-present ka ng mga videos ng, ng um, images, mga GIF. Kasi with that, pag, parang pag may gumagalaw or pag gumagalaw, may sounds, mas okay eh. Kasi yung senses mo, hindi lang isa yung uh, nag interact so senses your your sight hearing or better you can feel it mas maganda mas maiintindihan mo na ah kaya pala ganito pala yung concept na yon yung idea na yon so with that mas nanu-nurture ng mga students yung yung learning experience this we have the zigzag board so yung zigzag board ganito yung itsura niya usually uh, ginagamit natin to sa mga um, presentations ng different uh, outputs ng students or if we want to show a process, a certain process. So, pwede natin gamitin tong zigzag board. For instance, process number one, magsimula tayo dito. This process number two, three, and so on. Sa mga research conferences, usually sa mga scientific researches, ginagamit nila to tapos per board or per panel uh, nandun naka-indicate yung, yung first procedure na ginawa nila, second, third and, and so on. Or first panel uh, introduction, second is uh, methodology, third uh, results, discussion, then the rest, uh, conclusion and so on. So, uh, with this, mas na-organize natin yung presentation ng mga information. There's a similar app called Sway from Microsoft. Medyo ganito yung, yung itsura niya na pag ini-slide mo yung, uh, yung presentation na yon, Pag ini-slide mo. So, malaki siyang parang do, uh, connected presentation. Tapos makikita mo yung next uh, information. So, sa PowerPoint kasi, pag kinlik mo, next slide. So, yung sa Sway, parang more of slide siya. Ini-slide mo from left to right. So, I think it's quite similar with with the zigzag board. Next, we have the wall display. So, for wall display, para siyang mga bulletin boards. Um, boards that are for, you know, for presenting information. So, that's basically wall display. So, you can put um, images, much better if images or uh, yan, illustrations. Kasi pag puro text, uh, parang ang, ang hirap din naman na uh, ma, maintindihan. Though, ito, puro text, pero words lang. Well, since it's English, it's language, so, so kailangan talaga may text. Then, partner it with images. So, same thing with math. Ayan, nilalagyan niya ng mga icons, some images, para mas attractive, mas uh, magiging interesado yung mga students na pumunta dyan sa wall display and basahin kung ano yung mga information doon. So, with, with design, images, all of the elements about designs uh, included there. Para yun nga, mas maging interesting and attractive to read. Lastly, we have the rope and pole display board from the term itself. There's a rope and there's a pole. Tapos, di-clip yung mga uh, 
images, announcements, and so on. So, for instance, dito, may image ng students with description or some background about them. And it's, it posts it will be posted in this kind of board. So, Other People Matter Part 2 mukhang um, they are trying to to share their their personal information to others. Siguro, you know, to, to connect with other students also. Or parang ganito. So, you can put some images, probably um, some important events in a student's life. Pwede nilang ibida sa klase. Then post it here. Or some announcements like this. Siguro sticky note, tapos pwedeng i-clip, pwedeng i- pwede rin actually i-push pin, and so on. So that's the rope and pole display board. So here are some guidelines in designing conventional instructional materials. So first is you have to have unity. For instance, ang theme ay... Um, something about history of um, Indian people. So, yung design dun sa uh, board mo ay Indian. Tapos, ang mga ipapakita mo dun ay puro information about India. Hindi pwedeng uh, Indian yung, yung gusto mong ipakita na uh, na information or probably their history. Tapos, ang mga nakasulat doon is sinisingitan mo ng mga mga heart or flowers or uh, ano ba? Ano ba yung mga design na yun? Kumbaga, have a, a united theme for these instructional materials. If the headline, if the topic it is about history of this country, then most probably, syempre, the information should be about that country. The picture should be history about that country. The design should also be aligned to the theme, to the topic. Hindi pwedeng history of, uh, ano pa ba, Germany. Pero may mga flowers, flowers, may mga butterfly design. So, dapat may, may unity. Pag tinignan mo, ah, okay, this... This board shows something about history of of Germany. Kasi may malaking, syempre, yung, yung headline, my history of Germany and their flag. Then the details and so on with the design. Next is simplicity. Simplicity is definitely fine. Wag naman sobrang simple na, na plain, na boring tingnan, or hindi ganun ka interesting na basahin yung mga detalye dun sa instructional material. Simple but not having a lot of designs na na overpower na nun design yung essence or yung concept dun sa gusto mong ipakitang information sa instructional material. So simple but the design should not overpower again the necessary information in that material. So, sim simplicity. Another, sige, sa design, uh, na-follow naman, hindi ganun ka overcrowded yung, yung designs and so on, but in terms of text, wag din naman sobrang haba. Wag naman yung isang paragraph in and done. Much better, uh, just include phrases, short sentences, then pictures. Pictures, images, and so on. But then again, do not overcrowd your instructional material na ang gulo na, hindi na maintindihan or hindi mo na ma masundan yung, yung flow of, of concept, of idea. Kasi nga, daming nakalagay ang, ang gulo. It's super messy. Next is legibility. So, dapat uh, it can be read by your students or the audience. Wag sobrang liit, wag din naman sobrang laki. So, yung sakto lang na, na font size. And also, the the font text. Kasi, kung yung font text, eh, sa sobrang, um, di ba may mga font style na ang daming designs, baka hindi na maintindihan, maintindihan dahil nga natabunan na nung, nung design. So, 
much better if you choose a font style na madaling uh, mabasa kahit from afar. Consistency, say, somehow same with, with Unity. If you use this theme for your uh, instructional material, then, and yun pa rin naman ang discussion for the next uh, page, let's say, still use that. Hindi yung um, ginamit mo tong uh, style na to, tong design na to for a certain topic, tapos yung next topic, which is a continuation, you'll change it into a different style. So, uh, be consistent. Even with the font, with the uh, the way you present the information, dapat consistent. Kung gumamit ka ng ganitong font style, uh, size sa uh, uh, first page, then use it also on the next page. So, again, uh, be consistent with the information you present with the um, uh, what's this? With the contents, with the design, and so on. Next is clarity. So, same thing with legibility. Dapat uh, clear yung mga images, yung mga text. Not too small, not too big. Para pag uh, for instance, bulletin board. Pag bulletin board, maraming pupunta dyan at magbabasa. So, at least, kahit maraming students na nagbabasa, yung mga nasa likod, kumbaga makikita pa rin nila yung text kasi you've used the correct font size and text. So, always follow this. Again, it's okay if your PowerPoint presentation is uh, not too much of having a lot of sentences, it's fine. Kasi much better nga. If it's simple, it's simple, it's straight to the point, it's consistent with the theme, with the topic, with the discussion. Let's have a quick review of the discussion for Lesson 1, Module 3. We have defined what is instructional material, the factors to consider in developing instructional material, the different non-digital or conventional materials, and the guidelines in designing conventional materials. So, I do hope that uh, pag, pag nagpagawa na ako ng activity about making or creating your own instructional material, ay ma-apply niyo yung mga different uh, concepts that we've discussed here. So, please wait for my uh, next video lecture and also the other activities that we'll have. And thank you so much for, you know, doing your best even though these times are really hard. But I can see your effort, your participation in all of our activities. So thank you once again and keep safe everyone.